Hey, this is Michael Wynn with Oasis Ministries, and today we have Pastor with us, and we are doing this week's Kingdom Talk. A lot of exciting things and fun things, but Pastor has, tell us what's been going on this I am morning. late. I should have been here a while ago. So Kara's having a crisis. She's got this alphabet board, and two years old, she, she can just she count to 20, knows her alphabets. We've lost A. We were looking under every table. We were looking under the the cartoon stand we were looking under we looked at we cannot we we are missing an a so when when you were in the other room for a moment she took the v out and she put it up in the a and she put it in and it was slightly wider and she goes oh we <laughs> care speaking of kara so. i i didn't know this till this week and i have fed her hundreds of these about well, thousands of these because they're so tiny she she calls cheese puffs cheese pups pups <laughs> pups so she was telling me, I need my pups, my pups. And I was like, I don't know what you're saying. And she said, my cheese pups. <laughs> that, she is so wonderful. The word cheese so pups is still my Her and her Nene's having fun today. We have had a big, I mean, powerful, powerful weekend at MDT Church. And I know we were in Sunday school. We dismissed a tiny bit late. And when you come in, you could just feel, honestly, like a, a blanket of conviction in the room. Talk to us a little bit about Sunday morning. Uh, preached on the cities of refuge. That they, they were six cities, and three three on each side of, of the River Jordan, three for each kingdom, Judah and Israel. And and they they were placed so if anybody got in trouble to run to these city of refuge, it was only a day's journey. And I've I've studied on this for years, and I still have so many questions. The more I learn, the more interesting it just something that interests me. They had to keep the roads up. That city of refuge is a type of Jesus. They had to keep the roads open. They or not. They had to keep trees out of the road. They had to repair them if floods came. They had to keep them clean. And, and the gates were always open. And you can always get to Jesus. When the courthouse is closed and the restaurant's closed and Walmart's closed, you can always get to Jesus. When there's no church building open, you can always get to Jesus. He's always ready. And and my, my story dealt with, with Abner. Abner had... had Ashael had been chasing Abner, and Abner killed him. And his brother became the avenger of blood. He was going to kill Abner. And so Abner went to Hebron, the city of refuge, which is a type of Jesus. So the avenger of blood couldn't, could not kill him. He's accepted in the city of refuge. And then Azahel's brother comes, and the Bible said he speaks quietly, gently at the gate. Abner steps outside of Jesus, steps outside and he's thrust under the rib. I always wonder why, why David would say, you died like a fool. One of the most horrible things to say at a funeral, he's preaching his funeral, and he said, died Abner as a fool died. Your hands weren't bound, your feet weren't in fetters, but you died. And I thought, why? And then, it, then when I read Hebron, this, he was in the city of Hebron, which is a city of refuge. He steps outside of it. If he would stayed inside of it, they could not have touched him. Friends, stay in Jesus. When, you, when, you, when you're broken, stay in church. When you're hurt, stay in church. When your world, when, 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 you, when your marriages fell apart, when your homes fell apart, when your jobs fell apart, when your health fell apart, when your money's gone, stay with Jesus. Outside of Jesus, the enemy came to kill, steal, and to destroy. Stay in Jesus. Just get back up. Let Oasis ministry. That's one of my passions. I want to help you get back up. I want to help you get a hold of the Lord. I want to help you turn back to the Lord. Mike and I, the whole staff here, our dream and our desire is to see you return to the Lord. And if you'll return to God, God will return to you. And I feel him drawing somebody now. And so this, this is, but now this is, can I, can I have two minutes no, to preach? No, go ahead, preach, preach. This is the best part in the Lord stopped me. We had an amazing altar call Sunday morning. But when you, when you left your 10,000 acre, when you had accidentally killed somebody, when there was a death, and we all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord, we're all guilty. When there was a death and you left your, your, your 10,000 acre property, you had to go to the city of refuge and you had to live there and remain there. Only two things could happen, your death and you, you were carried out or the death of the high priest. And at the death of the high priest, you were allowed to go back and it was your, your past was erased. Jesus is not only our shepherd, he's not only our healer, he's our high priest. And when that high priest died, hallelujah, when he told Murray, don't you touch me now, I'm your high priest, i got to go sprinkle the blood. When that high priest died, we have liberty. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation. I don't have to walk around condemned about my past. The devil's going to kill me. I have no past. I am justified. It's under the blood. I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am a new creation. 
It takes me right back to your sermon you preached recently, uh, my new past. Oh, Every wow. day you're creating a new past. So at the death of that high priest, you can walk out from that city of refuge and go back to your 10,000 acre uh, farm. You're, you're free. And no, no avenger of blood can slay you or touch you or chase you or torment you. You are free from your past. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So don't die as a fool. Don't get outside of Jesus. Don't leave Jesus. Return to God and he'll return to you. Draw nigh to him and he'll draw nigh to you. I know we've been having a lot of pastors and leaders watching this podcast. And something that goes along with this, and I've got some more questions just on the spot for you. My mother-in-law gave one of the best compliments of our church of recent. She said she loved how diverse the people were here. And you, you go some places and it's just like everybody is one in the same. What do you do at MDT to make it a refuge for so many? In my years of travel, travel, my evangelism was my, my school, and I never got to go to Lee. I never had the opportunity to go to a school of ministry. So all my years of evangelizing became my, my school, my training for pastoring. And I'd go to one church, and everybody's dressed one way and one, one group of people another way. I saw very few mixtures. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they, call, they call New York City where the Statue of Liberty, they call it the mixing pot. There's ever, ever nationality. You can walk down the street and you'll hear 30 different languages in just a few minutes of time. Okay. I, I love it. And so when you walk into to Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle, uh, uh, every race, every nationality, people from different backgrounds. And, and we love Je Our one thing in common is the blood of Jesus. We love Jesus. We want to go to heaven. We want to help people. We have a passion to make a difference. Now, Pastor has, <clears throat> and I, I'm just trying to, poke you for some questions you have a big passion of keeping the platform clean but uh how do you how what are ways you've trained us to welcome people in here, this new walk with god oh you you, you just touched the biggest thing here is the key here's the key right now here's where other ministry here's where other ministry miss it we we we, we want everybody to be like one one pattern but there's a 30-fold, a 60-fold, and a 100-fold. At one time, Jesus had 7,000 followers. At one time, he sat down, he fed 4,000. At one time, 5,000. At one time, there was 70. At one time, there was 12. But when he went to that garden of prayer, he only took three people. And and, and every pastor, and it, it bothers me sometimes. You know, we, we'll have 250, 200, 250 on Sunday morning. On, on Tuesday night prayer, we'll have 60, 70 people. That used to bother me, but I realized... We want everybody to be just like us. Everybody's not called to the level we're called to. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't mean to Thomas because he didn't go to the Garden of Prayer. He wasn't mean to some of the others, Bartholomew. He wasn't mean to some of the others. They were not called to that level of prayer. He only took Peter, James, and John to that level of prayer. And even Amen. they fell asleep because he, he told them, he said, it's not your hour. So so you got to be willing. Uh, uh, you, you got Chick-fil-A. They serve nothing but chicken. So you can't get a you can't get a hamburger there. You can't get a lamb chop there. They have nothing but chicken. And and so some churches say well, we're just going to serve this one meal and nothing else. But but if you come and you don't want a T-bone, I want to make you the best French fries in the whole world. If you come and you don't want to fall in love like I do, then I want to make you the best banana split in the whole world. I want to make you hungry for what I'm hungry for. And if I run you off and if I don't love you and if I don't pull on you, how can I help you? But I I want to. I want to minister to your hunger just because we're a steakhouse. A Kara might come. Kara don't want a 21 ounce bone in real by. She wants she want chicken nuggets and fries. Every time. And, and if we don't feed her, you'll take her somewhere else. So I want to minister to our, our Sunday school children. I want to minister to the teenager. I want, I want to minister to the, to the young guy that it's first time to be to a church where they speak in tongues and the Holy Ghost moves it. Come to see some girl. I want something to get a hold of his heart and say, hey, I, I, I just don't want to come back to see this young lady. I want to know what they're doing. I want to know what makes them happy. I want to know why they're so passionate about this. Something that's, and I'm working on a study now, something that's got me stirred about this, uh, holiness, we see how it changes our life. So we want to not only offer it, we want to push it directly and quickly. It keeps you free. It keeps you free. But um, the Bible tells us that uh, what you do in secret, I will reward you openly. And I was reading that, you know, in your prayer and your fasting and these things. I want more than just me telling someone to do this. I want them to see what God's done in me yeah. that makes them want it. 
Well, I, I, I preach so little on this because because it's if you're not careful, you bring people under law and you force it. This is you you, you have to live this way because you want to. You know, my marriage certificate on the wall is not what makes me go home to Sheila. I love Sheila. And and it's it's not just the laws on the wall that makes me live for Jesus. I want to do this because it's in my heart. You know, I, I want to fight bears and lions when nobody's watching. Not so, just Goliath when I got a crowd. I want to only kill bears when nobody's watching. And I, I love this. Uh, and if you come to our church, you know this. Pastor, he's preached sermons that were titled like Letters from Hell. And then he's come up and he's preached Toy Story 5. And he's, you've done things that have helped each group of the church. And I think that's that's powerful and that's what we need. Do you remember me preaching oh. on Toy Story 5? The young guy stands up, Brother Wynn, there's not a Toy Story 5. It ends at 4. <laughs> we had someone jump up and yell, oh, it, ends it ends at 4. It ends at 4. Like I'm enjoying these. Yeah. Coming down where we talked about Brother Jason, tell us that story. I know Brother Jason, he preached last night, and you had just a real God story about that. Well, Jason, he, he was just so good. He was he was sharing about music, and he was sharing about about watching and guarding your, guarding your eyes and guarding your gates of your mind. And and uh, so six, probably, what, three or four months ago, we give his testimony, and we made an insert into the TV mm -hmm. programs. And this thing is played six, seven times a week on each station and so he preaches it that night well at 12 30 that night it's on the station and eight and six o'clock the next morning it's on another tv station with the same insert after he preached it so i walk in lowe's yesterday in cleveland and and two different pastors come up to me and one of a, of a good sized church they just they said bro when we love the ministry we follow you and they would tell me about the grandkids they they listen to everything we're saying it was so excited and he, he said your worship leader he said his passion has gripped my heart and said, from where Oasis has brought him from the bar to where he is now to that anointing, he said, how amazing. And I thought, this is a God moment. You know, here he is, Jason's preaching this last night, and it's on the TV program, and it's, and it's reaching out and touching people. And this pastor said it makes him want to go out and bring people. The, the thing Jason said, and this is going to chase me out through the rest of my life, uh, so many secular people and atheists, they say, if God's so good and God's so loving, why would he be made hell? And Jason said this one statement. He said, if you go to hell, you will have to trespass. You will have to go as an intruder. That's not the place you want to break into. Charles Spurgeon said, if they go, let them, let them crawl over my tired bodies, clinging to their knees, crying, oh, God, have mercy. If you, got, if you would, we'll put the links down below in the descriptions. Please watch Sunday morning. Sunday morning with the cities, with the gates, it is, it's unreal. And Pastor has one key point right before the altar call that will... It makes you look at salvation. I wish every lost person would see it. I, I wish, wish people would share it with their lost I wish brothers. Christians would see it because it gets yeah. you an idea of fundraising, how yeah. you want to be at that gate. Yeah. Be the refuge. And then Sunday evening, Brother Jason did a, a great powerful. sermon. So powerful. Uh, both were so convicting. We had great altar calls. Please take a moment and watch those. Uh, last week we talked about this. We started our youth Bible course this Sunday, and parents reached out to me and they're wanting to take it with their kids. I love it. So if anybody is still wanting to do this, message us, comment, call us. The number is 1-877-226-4088. If you message us on here, if you ain't got time to call, uh, we check it constantly and we will get you the Bible course. The Bible course has exploded. You see the mail this morning, I think. Bible course is from seven states. Seven states today, so, today. Just in one day. I think so. It, it, it's going wonderful. Um, this is my second time going through it. And I love it. We got one kid. I'm not going to name drop. We did a Bible trivia, and he got nine out of ten questions right. So afterwards, he's, he's really smart. He said, he come to me with the Bible course we gave him. He said, Micah, is it okay if I answer all these without reading? I said, uh-uh. I said, the point is to get us all reading. So I said, if you get them 100% correct, that's wonderful. I said, but we all want to have 100% read through. This. I love it. I love, I love it. Always smart, though. You get the people studying the Bible, it'll get in your heart. Well, okay, we're hearing this. We're starting in Genesis, and we had the choice, do we want to start in Genesis or Matthew? We chose Genesis. How important is the Old Testament to you? Uh, for, for two years, I carried a picture of your mother, and for the last 36 years, I've had your mother. From Genesis to Malachi, it's a picture of Jesus. It's a type of Jesus. But then when you get to... to uh, Matthew, you find him. You find him in a manger. 
one thing I'm excited about. And uh, Chloe, find the link to this. Uh, how recently did you do the Joseph sermon, Joseph and Christ similarities? At least seven months. At least. Okay, so. we're gonna. Uh, when we get to that, I want to have all your notes and run through with the similarities. There's so, and that's just one. But there are so many similarities there, and so many shadows you can chase in the Old Testament. I'm honestly, I'm so excited about doing this Old Testament study with them. What What is an old Testament story that you love? Oh, uh, so many, so many. Uh, when you think you can't find no more nuggets in it, you find more. I'm still excited about just two weeks ago, and this this is definitely not my favorite, but it's one of them. But I'm still excited about two weeks ago when I thought we could find nothing more new in David. When David went down to fight Goliath, you know, we're, this is deer hunting country. Who's going to go deer hunting with a new 30 alt 6? I have a 25 alt 6. Who's going to go deer hunting with a new 25 alt 6 and no no bullets? David went down. He didn't have no stones. But if God brought him to it, God's going to make provisions. Hey, man, I forgot about this. So if God brings you to a hospital to pray for somebody, you don't have to call, call Ann or Uncle. You can do it. You can lay your hands on the sick and they'll recover. If God brings you to it. And then he didn't have no sword to cut his head off, and God had Goliath's sword there. So I like that. I'm, I I'm always that get today. you to do the weekly challenge. Can I do this week's oh, challenge? Oh, please, please. Do something outside of your comfort zone. Because oh. David, he, he's out there, and he's doing things that, uh, well, I guess this was in his comfort zone, but the first time he had to kill the bear, he had to kill the lion. You have to do something outside your comfort zone to grow. So what, what's something we could challenge them outside their comfort zone? That could be go and pray for somebody. That could be visit a nursing home and just be friendly with folk. What's something else we could challenge? Can I tell you something that, that I'm enjoying right now? Yes. Is uh, uh, we, have, we have crooked preachers. We have crooked car salesmen. We have crooked politicians. We have some good preachers. We have some good car salesmen. We have some good politicians. We have, uh, we have a few bad policemen that America just went. But we have tens of thousands who go out. They may not get to attend their daughter's wedding. They may lose their life to protect me. They may not get to see their little child grow up because they're willing to go out and protect me. They're, they're retiring. They're, their nerves are breaking. If I'm in a restaurant and I see a policeman, I try real hard to buy them a dessert or pay for their meal if, when I can. If it's, if it's you know, I'm not going to go out of the way to embarrass them or something. But I've been, I've been doing this for a few months now. So, so I, I just did it in Chattanooga, and uh, I just whispered to the waitress, I said, I want to I wanna take care of the meal. She said, their meal's done, done paid for. I said, well, I'm going to buy them a dessert. She took them all to dessert. And so the, the, the police officer, African-American, he come back. He grabbed me and hugged me. He said, Brother Wynn, Brother Wynn. He said, I, I, and I think we mentioned this last week. He said, but I've followed your ministry. He said, my wife, he said, we got to have a picture. And I, he got a picture of me and him. Then I got one of us, and it was, it was a God moment. It just felt so good. And he said, he said, we, we're with you, Brother Wynn. He said, he said, you've stood up for us. We're standing up for you. We're following you. And uh, uh, this somebody need to know you care about us, but we care about you. Our soldiers, if I see a soldier, we just lost, we just lost 12, 13 soldiers. If I see a soldier in uniform, I want them to know I care about you. You, you care about America. You, 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 uh, I, I care about you. And if, and if you're a youth pastor or a leadership in a church and you're watching this, I want to tell you something that's really amazing we did. Uh, in COVID, we had to slow it down for a bit just for the regulations and everything. Our youth would get together and we would make 400 cookies. What can we do now? Cookies, I want to do something And now. we would bag them all up. We'd put them in a Ziploc bag and staple a church invite card to them and we'd take them to our local police force. And that was, they were beyond things. It got to the point to where our chief of police would come out and he'd always high five well, me or hug me. I am friends with our county sheriff. I'm going to call him and if he's not comfortable with us making them, let's buy something and take to them. Let's let them know we can do. We can do something. We can do something. Yes. But yeah, if your we'll church is looking for something big outreach to do to show care for your your community that you're yeah. called to. Jesse, make a note of that. I want to I I deal with that today. Let them know we care. Okay, I got one more question and then we're going to get into what I'm going to call the favorites line. Uh, do you have a specific time you're waking up right now? I'm, 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 I wake up early. I just, big, just, just wake up early. You yeah. don't get to see, uh, yeah, you got to wake up before the sunrise. Well, this morning woke up and it was raining. It just sounded so good. <laughs> so. Got in an argument. We woke up, baby, uh, got her up, I guess, a little too early. And her dilemma was this. She said, I'm awake, but it's still dark. She said, why is it not daylight in daytime? <laughs> 
had explained to her, it's just not rose yet. We're still in the dark part of the day. That, that lady, that lady. Here's my next question for you. Do you have a specific time of day you pray, or do you just pray at will? I have some set times. Uh, uh, I used to talk a lot about it openly, and then it just kind of became a kind of a vain, important thing to me, and, and kind of got convicted about it. So I just I have times I go pray, but I don't. Uh, uh, I don't want it to be that uh, my prior time is what I lean on. I, I just want to lean on Jesus. I don't want to pray less. I want to pray more. But I don't want a lot of confidence on that. I'm working this thing out. It's so easy to be self-righteous. Oh, amen. Uh, and I know that's so touchy. And I've been there, you know. You know. That's a uh, good way to look at it. I have, I have a, uh, well, I can't believe I'm going to share this publicly. I have a friend who's in eternity now and uh, he was uh, so rough on me but he went to doctors he would burn our hide you know you don't trust God you don't care about God you don't love God and uh, uh, God said blessed are the merciful that obtain mercy and he faced horrible horrible situations so I don't I don't want anything I do to be my righteousness I want it to be I want to live cleaner than I've ever lived pray more than I've ever prayed but that's not going to take me to heaven if I get to heaven, it's going to take a lot of mercy, and He has a lot of mercy. It's what, His grace. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes hundred yeah, percent yeah. sense. Um, so. I know a lot of people. They sit down. You know, this is when I do it. But if if I think back in hindsight, this question I asked you is because people tell me, "Well, I pray," and it's it's always a brag. So I want to be careful saying this because here I am just undoing what I just said. Uh, you know, we do our our uh, corporate fast. Mm-hmm. But I just did some recently, and even your mom didn't. I just did it so easy. Nobody, I just eased it through. And we have our meal a day, and then I just, just eased it through, and nobody, this is the first time I said that out loud, you know. Yeah. I was talking so, in Sunday and school. And I like those things like that, what you do in secret. He'll reward you openly. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. We, we need that secret yeah. relationship. Uh-huh. Uh, when I was talking about that in Sunday school recently, I said it's hard for me to do fasting in secret. Because I catch myself, oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> uh, there's a gentleman in church, he told me, he said, uh, fasting ain't uh, as useful unless you're replacing some time with extra prayer and extra study. I said, well, we got to. We got to have something to distract us. <laughs> this is so touchy. This is so touchy. We might all do a whole program on this. Uh, you don't have a real, real good friendship with anybody till you have a few secrets. Mm-hmm. I mean, if just everybody knows what you two know, then you're just another friend. Everybody that tells everything between them and Jesus, they, they don't have a real good relationship. You know, there's there's some stuff that Jesus has told me that I'll never tell anybody. And there, I mean, him's got some little dedications between us. Nobody else has to live this way. Nobody said this is just just some little stuff between me and Jesus. And and this makes it just it's just me and Jesus. It may not affect nobody else. You know, you know. Just some things he asks of me, requires of me, and I ask of him. Just some little, little things. Private and personal. Yeah, yeah. That it makes it a true relationship. Ma- it, it makes, makes it, it real. makes him so real to me. In yeah. fact, it's been some of my keeping, my stability in some of my deepest storms, you know. Okay, so we've had some people with some questions, and okay. I've compiled this list together, and we're going to do a chunk. We're going to call it the favorite section. Okay. So when you're looking online, if you're finding them, I think they're going to add these to the stories as well. What is your favorite candy bar? Wow. Now, I always assumed it was an Almond Hershey. Well, uh, we see, ain't talk about this. Uh, January, de- December, December. I was just feeling really bad. I was way over 200 pounds, way over 200 pounds, way over 200 pounds. Uh, eat me three or four Hershey's a day, uh, pine ice cream at night, just feeling really bad. Then I, then I got covid got really sick then we went into the january fast and at the end of the january fast i think by the end of january i think i dropped down to 202 and at the end of the fast uh something just got hold of me and i thought i want to be doing this if i'm alive i want to be doing this when i'm 70 80 90 going to haiti going to china going to new york helping somebody walk to a nursing home and if i and if i don't get a hold of my health now uh i'm 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 uh I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do this, you know. Your mom be rolling me around. I won't, I won't be able to do this. So uh, uh, since since January, 
since February the 1st, I've not had a Hershey's candy bar. Not since January the 1st. Wow. Uh, I, since January the 1st, I've had maybe ice cream five times. And I love ice cream, and I've not quit ice cream. And I've not quit Hershey's, but I'm just, uh, uh, you don't. for the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, and I enjoy my meal each day, and me and Mom, need to, we need to sit down to this, but the first time in my life, food don't have power over me. I've got me a, a Hershey's up in my cabinet, and I just got it there to just tell it, you know, you're you're not my boss no more. It's probably gonna be outdated, and I'm gonna throw it away. But I just it's some kisses, and I just it just it just don't have uh, so my new favorite candy. Found it last night. Found it last night. It's at it's a, a Russell Stover's sugar free dark chocolate coconut, and they're hard to find. But I'm into and uh, so so right now, Mom and I, you know, we're eating the. Uh, a meal a day. We've done this for eight months. We're eating a meal a day, and then later in the day, we'll allow us a snack. And if it something comes up, we need to eat out with somebody. We'll leave a light meal or something, or we'll skip that meal. And uh, feeling good again, down down to uh, uh, my 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 goals one seventy five, and uh, I'm at I was down to one seventy four. I'm back up to one seventy eight, and uh, so uh, feeling good again. But. Uh, uh, when I go to Hershey's, Pennsylvania, and I want to go bad, that's where I, one place I want to go. Just to, I want a cheese pretzel. I want to, I want to ride the, I want to ride the Amish wagon again. I want their I wanna, cheesecakes. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Shady, it's Shady Oaks. I want to go there. There's, that's what me and Mom. So we we can't leave Daddy right now, you know, over a day at a time. But when when Daddy gets to feel a little, oh, Daddy's just bouncing back, doing good. I think at my core, a part of me is a, a northerner because I'm not a big fan of cake. I love pie, and I like cold weather. Uh, we, me and Mom, we've got our self down now till uh, we can eat one meal. We're eating basically what we want. We're, we're cutting away back on our carbs, cutting away back on our sugars, way back on our breads. We have found some zero carb bread, zero, not two carbs, zero. Jesse can tell us more about that. Makes delicious cheese, grilled cheese. So you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not just coming off a of mess. You know, it's it's just I'm I'm just I'm just I can't believe how content I am with uh, uh, and still having a tiny bit of health problem. But man, I've turned so much, so much. I'm gonna tell you right now. I found this last night at our house, the best snack, and I think it came from you guys. We buy goldfish. Kara comes in with a Ziploc bag, I guess from Nene's. Was it from Nene's? And it was double cheesed goldfish. And she said Nene bought these. A kid snack. It was, I was like, let me try one. Oh my goodness, that was the best snack I've probably ever had. I, I found a Colby cheese I like. Is that what it is? No, no, oh. this is just a, remind me to give you. A little goldfish, and yeah. he was, oh my goodness, he was good. Okay, here we're down to our next favorite question. What is your favorite message you have preached? I asked the team in here, someone said it was the tomato plant from you, or I said it was um, letters from hell. If you search letters from hell, it's one of the most iconic ones that's come out of the ministry. And the Lord has literally took, I, I think he gave me this in the early 90s, you were sick. You were a little baby and you were sick and I'm, I'm headed to, to Mike Tanner's to preach and I'm crying, just crying because you're so sick and I had to go without my family. You were so sick. And I'm riding down the interstate and I got a pile of letters beside me. The ministry had started growing. I got a pile of letters beside me. I have to answer these people and I'm saying, Lord, I'm broken. How, what am I going to write down? And, I, and the Lord started speaking to my heart and said, what would somebody write back from hell? And so riding down the road in a thunderstorm, I got a composition book over here writing letters from hell, writing about a dad who told his babies, I was a good dad, I work for you, but I never taught you about God, now I'm in hell. Please don't come to this place. Write about a neighbor we never witnessed to. And so the Lord has took this, they've, they've made plays out of it, they've made skits out of it, they've preached to it. It's hundreds of sermons on it. The Lord has took this and it exploded. It's I've seen uh, many ministers in foreign languages all over Africa preaching it. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were at the uh, TV meeting, and this was probably in 2006 or something, you and I were there. And one of the pastors of a large church, he told us, he said, I said, what's the biggest thing you did? He said, we just did a huge skit on letters from hell. And I showed him on Facebook where it came, and he just, I remember his heart just melting. Here... Here was a question I want to ask you before uh, we go into it. I wanted to have a story. Uh, the question someone wanted to know was, what was your favorite pet? And it brought back, yesterday we were in the shop, 
we saw Jacob's collar. And I'm gonna tell you a story about that. Dad loves animals. <laughs> so we, we lost one of our favorite family pets. His name was Little Bear, great, great dog. You remember Little Bear? Yeah. And dad and mom said, okay, that's it. No pets for a while. So all we had was this cat named Chester and that was it. And I wanted a dog, I wanted a dog and I wanted a lab. So we're at a, a flea market and this gentleman, he sells all the prettiest puppies and there was a little one left and it was the runt. And dad's like, ah, let's not get it. We don't want it. We don't have no pets. Well, that guy was going to kill it because no one wanted it. And he was, oh, he treated that poor puppy. It was horrible. He come back a brand new puppy covered in scars because he was the ugly one. He had it tied with wire. Tied with collar. He, he was, oh, we had to do all so much joint in it. And dad was like, son, go get that dog. Yeah. <laughs> and Jacob went to be a hundred and what was the most he weighed out when we had him fixed? 117 pounds. They told us uh, he wouldn't just a lab, he was an old English mix, and everyone that saw him called him a calendar dog when he was at a, a good, he healthy was, weight. He, was, he had a perfect face, great chin. Uh, love that dog. Great family dog. And thank you for that. Had him, you know, I'm 28 now. Had him half my life, 14 years. Do, do you remember that we got the Doja work done here and we had the basement dug, and you and John are walking him and uh, Bo. Bo, and Bo fell. Do you remember that? So it was. It was, was like a twelve foot fall. He was blind in one eye. It's like a twelve foot fall, wasn't it? Every bit. Yeah, yeah, it was just right here. He was walking across. And <laughs> it was on his left side because he, he was. was going. He was going right by this wall, yes. and his foot went off. Did he pull John with him, uh, or did John not have the leash? I don't remember. I think I think he ended up jumping. Really, <sighs> yeah. One of my favorite things, Jacob was a lad, Bo was a bloodhound. Uh, Jacob, would t we'd take him to the creek, and uh, I'd either throw him in the creek or he'd run and jump off and go in. And Bo would go to pieces because Bo couldn't swim. So I remember once Jacob got near the edge, and Bo reached in and got a nip of his tail and picked that dog up out of the water by his tail. <laughs> I was so scared for him. He, he, to, today, though, thinking today, and I might have a different story tomorrow, but you know you know, animal I miss that of? Probably my favorite one. What was that? Big time. Oh, didn't get no better big time. Uh, do, you, do you remember for me and you would go eat after we would buy a horse? Uh, no. CC's Pizza. CC, okay, yes, yeah. yes. Remember when we got Buttercup? I remember Buttercup, but I don't yeah. remember what happened. Yeah, we, we, we had to go eat it. See, remember we found her down there and she's just so good to you. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I remember uh, the cat I was mentioning earlier, Chester. Tell him the story about how we got Chester. From the horse. Oh, oh, <laughs> now that was a. Uh, that, that was thunder. Was, that was thunder. So, so a, a friend of mine said, said I got a horse. I want to, I want to <laughs> give away. And he didn't tell me how wild and mean it was. I mean, this horse was wild. It was a four-year-old quarter horse that had never been broke. So we brought him home, and I said, Well, I have to borrow your horse trailer. He said, That's fine. Well, he had a stray cat he wanted to get rid of, and he put the cat in the trailer. <laughs> so, was to keep him. So, so when we brought the horse home, the cat comes out too. So we got a horse and a cat. That that horse became my friend. Oh. But uh, but and and I broke him. I rode him. Oh, I was out. To, he wouldn't tie. And I, I'm preaching in Texas, and I find me an old cowboy. I said, "How do you break a horse? Give him to tie." I was thinking of this yesterday. And he said, "Buy you car or bicycle inner tubes and let it stretch." And he said, "Just tie him to a tree." And, he said he'll pull back and won't break his neck. And if he rires up, it ain't going to kill him. You know, too, and he said he'll wire him out. And he said in a, in a week's time, you can tie him with a piece of nylon string. And it, we worked and worked and worked. Remember his wolf tooth where he was in such pain, the guy came and knocked it out? I just buried him. He was my friend. He passed. Yeah. I, I switched but, you off uh, topic. Tell us a couple stories about big time. Oh, big, big time. Big time would, I would carry. Uh, uh, carrot or apple and he would put his head right here and I would walk all over that field and he'd keep his head right here and stay up with me and he would he would set he was he was about 17 years old when we got him and we kept him forever and uh, uh, he, he would he would sit down sometime and let you get on him and then just get up he loved to be rode and and your mom rode him and your mom rode him and she she was hanging on with her heels and when you dug those heels and you're telling him to run Tennessee Walker, and he took off with her and your mom. She prayed, "Oh Jesus, don't let me get hurt." And we caught him and slowed him down. He, she didn't fall off. I probably trust Kara around him. 
Oh, yeah. There was no gentler animal. As big as he was, you could be in a stall with him, and he would make sure never to pin you. He would turn around slow to make sure he never squit. Like, he was always thoughtful. The one time Toby put the strap too tight, he couldn't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> he just laid down. Yeah, he, he laid He couldn't him. breathe. Yeah. yeah. The belly strap, yeah. What, what was he again? It was Tennessee Walker. And, and he had that gait. I mean, he was he was the horse. He could raise a tail and everything. And, and he came from a riding stable that that it, at his age they wanted to retire and find somebody. And we we were we loved him. Yeah. He was tall too, wasn't he? Was he was real tall. He was about yeah. our tallest horse, wasn't he? Yes, yes. Six or eight we had. So. Um, next one. What is your favorite theme to study in the Bible? Oh, just. Just my, my favorite thing right now is going from Genesis to Revelation, finding Jesus. Because Jesus, it's in him we live and have our being. So I find him, I just find him from Genesis to Revelation, you know. When he was the light of the world. When, when was he the light of the world? He was the light of the world in Genesis. And God said, let there be light. He didn't make the sun till the fourth day. That was, I asked employees questions to ask, and that was one of their questions to ask yeah. you. That, so he said, let there be light. So he was for three days, the Word. The Word was made flesh and dwelt us for three days. He just shined it. And it ended with him being the light of the world. You know how it's going to end? You know how it's going to end? There's no need for the sun or the moon there, for he's the light of that city. It ended with him being the light of the world. It started with him being, it's going to end with him being the light. So, you know, and you find him the seed of the woman. You, you find him the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, you just find him from... Genesis to travel, and I love, you know. Um, everybody that is watching with us this far, please take a moment, like this, comment, share it, and if you have any questions like the ones that have wrote in here, please message us. We would love to get these questions answered. The next one, and this is actually a question from me. Okay, now this morning I was just counting, going quick, and between Oasis and MDT, and I stopped at over 70 ministries. What is a ministry currently that you are most passionate about? This, uh, uh, hands down, definitely right now, 61 years old, and, and I've been counting all the different ministries. It's amazing how we reached out. You know what one of my favorite things is right now on account of COVID? What? It's hands-on, one-on-one, a phone call, a text. Uh, uh, last, last night I was texting somebody away from this area that lost a spouse. Uh, this morning I'm reaching for somebody who's... Uh, not a young man, not a young man, but his wife has walked away. And just, just saying, you know, God's got this. You're, you're, you're a man of God. It changes nothing about you. It's a one on one, you know. Uh, for the days over, uh, Car- Carol has uh, lost her s- a son. I, Sheila and I got a. I'm going to be talking to Carol today, just saying, saying, Carol, you know that. And and Jason helped me so much. Sun- Sunday morning when he talked about we're just going to lean on Jesus, you know, we just. I was Jesus, and he, he's enough. So I'm going to call Carol and tell her that today. I got, I got, and quick as I finish this, I got to check on Stephen. You know, he's, he's like a son to me. So I'm, I'm really enjoying one-on-one now. And if my, our, my office staff here, my workers, you, you and Jesse, just so I love pulpit ministry more than ever. I'm more passionate than ever. I love the TV ministry. I love the podcast, but I'm really enjoying that one-on-one. What can I do to make your load lighter? What what can I? And people that's watching, send us your needs and requests. How can we pray for you and help you? What can we do to lift your hands up? We have a staff here that loves people and cares about people and loves Jesus. What can we do to encourage you, to strengthen you, to help you? What can we do? Uh, here's the next one, and you've touched on this many times. Jason hit this big time Sunday night. But a parent called me yesterday and hadn't seen Jason's sermon. And they had a conversation with their kid about the dangers of secular music. And they were wondering if they were being too hard and where I stood and what I thought. Uh, One thing, and I'm I'm going to ask your thoughts on this, but can I talk just a brief moment? If you look up the 10 most popular songs of this year, they talk about a lot of, they talk about drugs. They talk, they talk a lot about bad stuff. And each one of them talk about it in a glorifying way. And I, I think secular music, like anything, has a spirit behind it. But I think secular music is also a very smart tactic by the enemy 
because when people listen to it, they don't always start with songs like that. They start with things they feel are more innocent. But that's where every genre and everything points to. And I, I think it's at a, a, I think it tries to presume itself as innocent and non-dangerous to get you there, but then it keeps you there with the dangers. Where do you stand? There's so many sides to it. There's nothing good about it. If it don't glorify Jesus, you have to ask yourself, who does it glorify? Okay. Where does it take me? Does it take me to the throne or does it pull me away? Uh, would I be would I be comfortable, my pastor, my mom and dad, knowing I'm listening to this? But but the big thing big thing about this music, music music is uh, it not only take us to the throne of God, it'll take us to the pits of darkness. Music, when your heart's heavy and you're overwhelmed, you you can get the right worship song and it'll pull you out of depression it'll pull you out of fear it'll pull you uh what was it uh a year ago when Kara was so sick what was that song jesse do you remember that that song song? it was it was a song that the worship team sings uh well they at that point they sung a lot and i pulled it out on my phone 104.7 fever bro uh, uh, that morning you pulled it out in our, our our playroom there and god came in that room so but now listen to this anybody that's had a, a background lost and that you had a favorite song uh, a country song a rock song a heavy metal a secular song if you were drinking then if you were in a bedroom then if you were in drugs then that spirit there when you hear that song again the spirits connected to that will take you back to that memory you relive that thing all over again because mm-hmm. there's a spirit attached to that music that, that's the reason when you're heavy, listen to this, that's the reason when you're <clears throat> you're heavy and you turn on and, and Jason begins to sing, there was Jesus, he, his anointing, his anointing connected to that song will take me to the throne room. That worldly singer, their anointing connect that song will take you back to that place of sin. Spirit, spirits are connected to music. And why would anybody Jason want to see that He's 100% out. right. And it, when it takes you back, then you got to dig your way back out of that. I, and why, why, why play with something? You know, you know. Uh, why, why, why eat a coconut cake and put a roach in it? Why, why order a T-bone and tell the cook, say, you know, could you put two hairs in it? Why have a clean vessel and put stuff in it that you know is filthy? We've been doing this series on identity, and if we're truly to believe that there is a living Jesus inside of us, you believe that? Is that places we want to take Him? Is that places he'll stay? I don't believe he'll live in a duplex. I believe he'll have a lot of mercy. I believe he'll tug and he'll pull. But there's one, one, one. T- sooner or later, he's going to say, "Hey, you know, uh, I'm going to evict myself. I'm just going to move out if you if you don't want to be a vessel of honor for me. Then I'll just make you a vessel of dishonor." So if if you're watching this now, I I believe, and our our leadership and our team here all teaches that there is danger. Not well. If you listen to Brother Shane. Shane talks about it more serious than any of us. He said he, and I don't remember what band it was, that uh, he had a mock band just like him. And he said before he knew it, the music led him straight to devil worship. And he wow. said his room it's was that covered. Powerful. It is that powerful. And I didn't even know this, but he yeah. said the same band, he would get the same pentagrams as them. or Is that what they're called? Yeah. He would get the same things as them and the same posters as them and the same demonic things as that band. It might, it might have been as far back as 10 years ago. It was on a Sunday night, and there was just an anointing came in there. I had not mentioned movies. I had not mentioned music. It was just a, an anointing. I'm preaching on being a clean vessel for God and drawing nigh to God. And I'm preaching away, and the glory of God's in there, and a young man gets up walks out. And, and you'll be surprised how you can watch and think and preach. So I thought, and I'm trying to think back, you know, what, why, why did he leave the building? Another gets up and walks out. Do you remember this service? I do remember this and, and service. And I'm, I'm still just preaching. And this guy comes back in a squalling with an armload of about 100. Uh, 500 D, uh, CDs. An armload. And he takes them to the altar and he's squalling and he starts breaking them. And when he does, this other person, I mean, this other person been out at the same time they had spoke, they come in at the other side. And the next service, people are bringing movies. They're bringing stuff. They And and I, and I, I stopped sir, I said, what's going on? And, and we're crying. He said, I just want to get right with God. I don't want anything that's not right with God. And they're breaking them in the altar. People were laying down cigarettes. They were laying down. There was some drugs on the altar. There was some stuff. And I, I remember I remember somebody getting up and said, we got to destroy all this right now. 
They were flushing stuff. They were throwing stuff away. They were destroying stuff. And it was just an anointing came in that service. I just want to be right with the Lord. We're coming down to a close here. If you've got anything to add, you absolutely can. But I had one big question. Knowing as much, much as you do now, being as experienced you are in ministry all years, traveling, pastoring, bishoping, and helping so many churches across America and the world, if you had one piece of advice for someone starting out in ministry, now that could be someone stepping in as a pastor, someone as a Sunday school teacher uh, in worship, whatever that ministry may be, what would that advice be? So simple, so simple. I, I remember calling a young man. It's probably one of my tougher phone calls. And I told him, I, I said, can I talk to you? And can I just be a dad and be a pastor? He said, yeah. And I said, you know what your problem is? I said, you know why you're always struggling? You're never encouraged. You're always down. He said, no. I said, you love ministry, but you don't love Jesus. You, you love, you love, just like a country singer would love a platform. You love a platform. You love a microphone. You love people watching you. You love singing. You're excellent at music. But you've never fell in love with Jesus. And uh, my advice to anybody be, Guard your heart with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Ministry is wonderful. It is just, there's, uh, I remember, remember Pete said, he said, he said, I've tried every drug, I've sold every drug, I've had every drug. He said, but there's no high like Jesus. And there's, there's nothing that can compare to kneeling beside somebody and watching somebody. I mean, I mean, it's just priceless. Watch somebody weep their way. There's nothing that can compare to seeing a home put back together. There's nothing that can compare to walking in a room and, Mom and dad are crying and saying, you know, the cancer's gone. There's nothing compared to, to see, watching daddy walk out of that hospital when you see the glory of the Lord. But it's, it's not all about that. There, there's times your hearts get broke. You get used. You get disappointed. There's times you pray and God crosses his arms. But if you love him, if you love him, that's my stabilizer. I love Jesus. I won't always understand him. Uh, uh, I, I told him the other day, I said, I said, Jesus, you've killed some people. I'd let live, and you let some people let live, and I'd probably knock in the head, you know. Uh, my ways are not always your ways, and your ways definitely ain't my ways, but I love you, and I trust you, and I know what you're doing is right. I don't always understand you, Lord. I don't always understand, you know. I just don't always understand, but I love you, and I trust you. And the greatest thing anybody can have is love Jesus. And, and, and you you got to work on it. you got to get in that altar you you got to you got to listen to more sermons uh, you you you, you got to you just can't hear one sermon on Sunday you got to play you got to uh, uh, remind me after a while there's there's one of my friends he's wanting to know how how he can get us on on Facebook okay. so remind me that and and if you're out there and you need us to help you set up so you you can go back to Facebook you can go back list all of our music you can go back to YouTube. There's two Anthony Wins. There's a rich guy that owns Las Vegas. Then there's this poor country preacher, Anthony Wins. So, <laughs> so just put in Pastor Anthony Wynn. We got thousands of sermons on YouTube. They're free. I call the office here. We'll send you CDs, DVDs. Uh, uh, if you go to oasisministries.com and on the top, well, if you're on a cell phone, if you're in the menu and you click watch, you can do sermons there. Or if you do the live stream, the, under the live stream has a link to our Facebook and YouTube. And we'll put those links below. And I want to keep talking about it. If anybody has lost anybody recently in death, uh, we would love to send you free our, our book on grief. And I have three people I want to, Jesse, get with me. I have three people I want to mail that to. That's lost loved ones. Uh, uh, one thing before we come to a close here, and I, I feel this, they've pulled out of Afghanistan and all these people are left here. Would you feel comfortable doing a special prayer? I was up here. I didn't leave here until 11 o'clock last night. Just my heart's heavy for our nation and some needs I'm praying about here and just for our, our people. But yes, could we pray now? Let's pray now. Lord, if you hung the moon, I know you can help us. And the thing I rest in right now is, Lord, I don't understand everything that's going on in this administration, decisions that's being made, and choices that's being made. But, Lord, you kept us through the Depression. You kept America through World War One and World War Two, and when my daddy was serving in Korea. Remember when the hearse rode up in 60, probably 68, and our little neighbor boy never made it home alive from Vietnam, and you kept us through that tragedy. And, and I'm just resting now, Lord. There's too many praying people still in America. There's too too many Mike and Jesse's left that's praying and weeping and standing in the gap. So so we're in good hands. But, Lord, I, I pray for this nation over there. 
America's, it, we've been a, a stabilizer, whether it was just 1,200 troops or a few thousand. We've, we've been a security. We've been a safety blanket. And now that's swept away from I pray you'll have mercy on them. I pray you, you just, just, just divinely, divinely guard and protect, Lord, any of those that's wanting to lead the nation. Make a way out. Lord, any of any of this got family and friends, our Lord, put a hedge around them. Put angel of the Lord around them. And Lord, have mercy on this nation in this. Don't let war break out, Lord. Don't let this terrorist group just explode and begin to de, trying to destroy the world. And all those that's facing sickness and troubles right now, have mercy, oh God. Please have mercy. I thank you, Lord, for this ministry, for these this this office workers that work so hard and so faithful I ask you to touch hearts and lives just keep us and let us fall in love with you let us draw nigh to you in Jesus name we pray everybody said amen, amen. hallelujah Mike I've sure enjoyed this I've enjoyed this today but... I have a question okay so your ministry's growing exploding I think I've looked I've looked back over your sermons I think one of my favorites I never hear it preach the way you said it was the second mile so tell us a little bit about that before we quit. Second Mile. Um, we were talking about Chick-fil-A earlier. Second Mile was birthed directly after that. Me and Jesse, we, we pulled into Chick-fil-A, and the drive-through was, it was the busiest I've seen it. So we waited through all this mess in the drive-through, and they go, and they said, listen, we're so sorry. Your food's coming out. Would you go park over here, and we'll bring it out to you? So we go park over this way, and they usher us out of the drive-thru, and we go park over here. And this gentleman, he comes running as fast as he can, and I'm hungry. And he goes to hand me my food, and when he does, I grab it, and I drop it. <laughs> so I'm looking. My sandwiches are wrapped in aluminum, so I pick up my sandwiches, but my fries, and I wanted waffle fries so bad, they scattered out like this. And I looked at him, and I was like, well, I did what I did. And I was like, well, hey, sir, you have a wonderful day. He's like, no, you ain't going nowhere. He said, I'm getting you fresh fries. And I was like, I don't need fresh fries. I was like, I want them. But I was like, this wasn't your fault. This was my fault. Dude comes out, two large fries, and he could tell I was sad, and he brought us both a cookie. So I got consumed. I was like, oh, my goodness. I went and bought books. I started watching YouTube. I've got uh, – Mr. Truitt's autograph upstairs, like the gentleman that started the whole thing. Which, by the way, you may not know this, Chick-fil-A started food courts. That's how they got big. They started putting them in malls, and that was where they exploded. The uh, Bible tells us, if a man beckon you to go one mile, go ye too. And the history behind that verse is, there was this great chaos in the land. So these Roman soldiers, they were like, listen, we're constantly moving for war. And we want this king, we want you to make a law that if we ask a man, because we're traveling so much, to help us carry our uh, tools one mile, that they have to. So he said, you know what, I'm going to take that a step further. It's only going to be the Jews. Any Jew you see, if you tell him, hey, carry my shield, carry my sword, carry my armor, he has to do it a mile. So then Jesus gets up on Sermon on the Mount. People are furious about this. The people are they're hurt, they're angry. And they're saying, you know, if they're unable to carry a mile, the Roman is allowed to kill them. So then Jesus gets up in front of all these people, and he says, if a man beckons you to go one mile, go two. So they look at the king of kings, and I feel God right now, they look at the king of kings, the Lord of lords, they say, you're telling me not just to go the mile that the man's called me, you're telling me to go that extra mile that's not even needed. Now this isn't in the Bible, but history tells us that Romans started repenting because they picked somebody just to be mean. And they'd say, I know your home's that way, and I know you have a goat, and I know you have your supplies. I'm going to make you drop all that now, and I'm going to make you go this way. And they would take them a while, and then they wouldn't stop. They would look at them in the eye and say, hey, can I go one more mile with you? Wow. And they said Romans started repenting. And they said because the Romans' hearts got so soft, they told the king, we've got to kill this law. But could you imagine? And that was such a difficult thing. And God calls you and me the same way in our lives to not just go the easy mile, but that second mile. And Chick-fil-A uses it in a business standpoint. I didn't have to have fries. That was my fault. I definitely didn't have to have two cookies. Best cookies on the world. I'm going to do it. Chick-fil-A talk right now. Go get you a cookie. Those are good people. But he tells his employees, don't only go one mile, go the extra mile. You know, that's been the heart of our ministry. How many hundreds or thousands of souls have we changed because of that extra mile? God's used that. 
It's, it works. It works. It works. Humanity is seen in the first night. Christ is seen in the second. Because it's no longer flesh moving. Wow. Flesh wants to stop when, it's, when you can. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you go past what flesh wants, that's when Christ steps in us. And speaking of second mile, we got partners. We got people that have donated every month. They've went and signed up and gave another $5, another $10, another $20 for Haiti. And that's second mile. So uh, something we want to do specific on this, Chloe, Jesse, make sure we get some of the cool pictures put in the comments or however we can do that. Do we have a check ready for Haiti. We are, we are we're ready to give it. And show some. We're difference. talking pallets of rice, uh, beans, cooking oil, so much, peanut butter, so much stuff for the people affected. So it, people that are financially and praying with us and standing with us, thank you for going that second mile with us. So think. Take a moment and like this, comment on it, share this, Please send share this to a friend. It. Share it, yeah. You know, on Messenger, they can send it to some of their friends and help spread it. Or if you just hit share, you can share it directly to your page and start tagging people in from there. Yeah, that's big where you tag them. Yes, yeah. if you It'll tag a friend teaching. that you think would, this would help, please yeah. do that. It would help us greatly. Send us some questions. Oh, keep sending. We love these questions. Yeah. I really do. Love you, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Pray for us. Thank you.